We are with State Representative Vandana Slaughter from the 48th District. You are the new chair of the House Higher Education and Workforce Committee. Please tell me what that's like. Yes, I am the first Indian American chair of this committee and uh, first woman in the House of Indian South Asian descent. So I'm really proud to be a representative of diversity of our leadership in the House. I also am just really privileged to be on this committee because for me, higher education has always been a place for learning and inquiry, and it's made a difference in my life and the success in my life. And I know that it has in many others. But I also, we, we changed the name of the committee from higher education to college and workforce development because there is a recognition that we should have multiple pathways to our life to meaningful work and the dignity of work and that higher education has a role to play in that space. And so it gives me an opportunity to work with so many stakeholders and students and institutions and leaders in the business and labor communities to try to build up equitable pathways for students to find work and to see what their educational future could look like. And I look forward to that with all the other committee members and stakeholders who are interested in that space. We also have seen, of course, higher education doing really good work with COVID as well. This committee has done a lot of really good work. Like in the past year or so, we actually have made the state need grant and we renamed it the Washington College Grant, which gives free and reduced tuition to students who are making less than $50,000 a year. And that's pretty significant. And that was a huge, a huge accomplishment for the College Workforce Development Committee. And I give kudos to the former chair, Drew Hansen, and sort of shepherding that through. So we have started with a very strong foundation. And so the job this year is really to address economic recovery, to address the pandemic, to help students actually understand what their options are in the educational system and to be able to give some capacity and resilience and recovery, not only to the institutions to help students, but to the students themselves. So we're very focused on wraparound services, on continuing to support institutions to re retain their ability to serve students because right now everybody's struggling. Enrollment is a question that we are not certain about going forward. We're seeing some really interesting bills come forward to help students who normally are marginalized or disenfranchised or don't have an opportunity to get an education in different sectors to be able to get that opportunity. So I look forward to all of those approaches and those are kinds of the focus that we have right now. We also want to expand strong internship and apprenticeship programs as well to help our students move forward and find pathways for success. I want to ask you about the transportation package that was rolled out this week. You are a member of that committee and you had a very active voice. So please tell us more about that. We rolled out a transportation package today that was based on stakeholder discussions, over 90 stakeholder sessions to listen to all different parts of our state and communities impacted by transportation. They asked us to design a transportation package that reimagines how vehicle goods and people are gonna move in the future and to take into account health, safety, equity, and addressing climate change. And we believe that we did that. It's a $26 billion package with a lot of different investments in those spaces. And I hope to talk to you a little bit more about the details in the future as we roll this out further. Lastly, do you have a message for your constituents? Yes, please, in this virtual environment, sometimes it feels like we're not as connected in person as we could be but I'm hopeful that you will reach out to me online by email and by phone to my staff in my office. I'd love to hear more from you. I hope that if there are any bills or legislation you're interested in, you will uh, participate in public testimony because we can re reach people in places and times we never have before. Um, I know that sometimes we're divided, but I feel like in many ways, maybe we could, be, we could come become united when we think about Washington State as our home and to support our neighbors and to be able to recover from this pandemic. So thank you again for all the feedback that you have given me and I look forward to hearing more from you.